Now we turn to China. Heavy rains continue battering parts of the country. Now the Three Gorges Dam is facing its biggest threat since its creation. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more. China's flood situation has reached a new high. New waves of flooding are taking shape in the country's two biggest rivers, the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers. The Three Gorges Reservoir, located in Hubei province along the Yangtze River, is forecast to see a flood peak of 74,000 cubic meters per second on Thursday. That would mark the greatest flow since the famous dam's construction. The Ming River, the Yangtze River's biggest tributary, is also expected to see historic high flood levels never before seen in the area. In preparation, officials from the southwestern province of Sichuan issued the highest level overflow warning for the area. It's the first time the maximum danger warning has ever been used. Elsewhere in both northern and southern China, heavy rain has been battering the country for weeks. In the northwest, it caused a landslide and flooded the homes of 300 farmers. And still on its way, Typhoon Higgis is set to make landfall on Wednesday in China's southern coastal areas. It'll be the third typhoon to hit the country this year, and with it will come even more rain. In Sichuan province on Sunday, the water level rose so rapidly that the two ends of a bridge were quickly flooded, trapping cars along the middle of the bridge. The high water also flooded a supermarket, where video shows instant noodles floated on the surface. Now we take a look at an enormous wave of mudslides in northwest China. Some villages were even buried up to three stories high. That's as at least 800 people were trapped. In the afternoon on Monday, mountain slides hit some areas of Longnan City of northwestern Chinese Gansu province. A mud rock flow burst into a river, forming a lake. Some villages are located within the lake. According to local media, more than 13,000 people in that area were evacuated, but still many couldn't make it in time. Muddy water flooded the houses, and people were standing on the roofs, waiting for rescue. Shuemogo village was completely flooded. The buildings were flooded, covering three floors. Everything is shut down. People died. There is nowhere for me to go. Some people are missing. Ten or twenty people have been rescued. Eight hundred people are trapped. On the morning of Tuesday, villagers told us that the water level of the lake had dropped by over ten feet, revealing two floors that had been flooded, causing huge losses. All wooden houses collapsed. Water and electricity have been shut down since yesterday. It rains every day. There are landslides and mudslides everywhere in the valleys. The river is blocked. Everywhere is totally flooded. Flood water released by blasting has been carried out several times, and houses were also damaged. We are so saddened. The loss is great. All the people have been evacuated now. We all felt desperate. The water of the river was rising to an extremely high level and swept a bridge away. Mud and rock flow from the mountain rushed into the river, causing yellow mud waves. Muddy water washed down a sloping street, pushing several cars downstream, and the person who captured the clip shouted to the passerbys, hurry up. <laughs> Reporting by Xiong Bin, Li Peiling, NTD News. California officials have opened an investigation into the former investment chief for the nation's largest pension fund. He's been accused of financial conflicts of interest and falsifying documents. California's Fair Political Practices Commission says it's investigating complaints regarding the former chief investment officer of America's largest public pension fund, CalPERS. Last week, the commission notified former CIO Ben Mung's attorney that the agency received anonymous complaints based on a news article. It attached a Financial Times article regarding Mung's investments and his disclosure of them, saying it would investigate all allegations. The commission says it hasn't come to any conclusions yet. Ben Mung resigned from his position at CalPERS earlier this month, saying he had to focus on his health and family. But just days before he resigned, the Naked Capitalism blog accused Mung of falsifying financial documents and having financial conflicts of interest. Several CalPERS board members say they're looking into the circumstances surrounding Mung's resignation, including when the pension fund's chief executive Marcy Frost first learned of Mung's possible conflicts of interest. 
Earlier this year, Congressman Jim Banks asked California's governor to investigate Meng's misappropriation of pension funds into Chinese companies and his relationship to the Chinese Communist Party. People in a Californian city saw a beautiful natural phenomenon when the waves on their beaches shone a brilliant blue. The Monterey Bay Aquarium was there to capture the spectacle. Waves off the Pacific Ocean put on quite a show last week for the residents of Monterey Bay, California. The city just south of San Francisco saw bright, glowing waves. They were produced by a type of plant plankton called dinoflagellates. According to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, the agitation of trillions of dinoflagellates in large blooms produces the blue lights. It's known as bioluminescence. It's the production and emission of light by living organisms. The glow of fireflies is another example of bioluminescence. As schools across the nation kick off the new school year, some are headed back to school in person, while others are keeping class online. One Georgia high school teacher tells us how he's faring with a remote start to the school year and what he thinks could be the long-term impact of taking on this style of learning. Ten states have ordered schools to stay closed and to start the school year online, while just four states took the opposite approach, requiring that schools at least offer a part-time in-person option. But for the majority of the states, the decision is left up to the local school districts. One Georgia teacher says he keeps in mind how tough that decision must be. But the people in our school district that don't have a choice, I understand their frustration. However, the only thing I would say to those people is pray for our leaders, our school board, our superintendent. They're trying to make the best decisions for every kid and every human being in Coweta County. Where he teaches in Coweta County, they started the year online. Cornwell doesn't mind teaching online and actually enjoys it. He says it brings him back to the excitement of being a first year teacher again. One challenge, though, is connecting personally with his new students. But Cornwall says he's trying his best to be creative so and keep his students I can engaged. To make as exciting as I can. And like Friday, I'm going to dress up. I've got a Revolutionary War costume. So I'm calling in <clears throat> sick Friday and General Cornwallis, not Cornwallis, coming to fill in. He's going to be the sub Friday. So I'm just just stuff like that to engage him. So it's not so god awful boring. So far, they're in the fourth day of class and attendance has been pretty good. About 28 of the 30 students regularly attend. That's a drastic improvement compared to the end of last year, when the regular attendance dropped from 58 students to only three. But these kids are starving for school. Like, my virtual attendance is fantastic. They ask questions. They would never admit it, but they, they want to go to school. They want to learn. Cornwall says he thinks the online learning will have positive long-term impacts. It can help students adapt to the future of learning. As parents and teachers across the nation adjust to another year of online class, Cornwall says the best advice he can offer is to be open to learning new things and to stay flexible. Melina Weiskup, NTD News.